Point clouds. What are point clouds? It is a term stemming from Clarice days, and it refers to transforms in scatterers, representation of position, rotation, and scale data in points. You can use this data as scatterers that Octane is famous for. The problem was, until recently, you had to do it in your DCC or use rather limiting scattering tools within Octane standalone. We fixed that by making LMI Point Cloud Baker. It can take any points and turn them into usable scatterers within Octane standalone. Today, we're looking at how to do it in Houdini. Currently, internally, Octane only works with uh, string-based CSV transform matrices, which is really suboptimal, to say the least. So, Point Cloud Baker is made for static scatterers, not animations. For FX work, I will be showing you how to work with all kinds of particles and data in a separate video. What Octane Standalone needs is a shared binary container for points that we would be able to use as scatterers as well. Currently, if you will import Alembic points, they won't be recognized as valid scatterers. And it's a pity because binary containers can handle hundreds of millions of points with all kinds of attributes. But the good news is that Otto assures me that change is coming very soon. While we are on limitations topic, let me explain why you wouldn't want to bake any kinds of scatters from a DCC. I'll show you on a practical example. Let's say I have geometry that consists of 10 pieces and I scatter it 500 times. Upon baking, Octane will do something inexplicable to me. It will take each piece of your geometry and scatter each 500 times. So instead of storing the scattered data only one time, it will store it 10 times. This is why huge scatterers were impossible to bake before. If you scattered a tree that has 50 elements 5 million times, in reality, Octane is trying to store 250 million transforms, which is a really serious amount of strings to store in suboptimal CSV file. Now you know why it was so hard or impossible altogether. It's important to understand that we don't fix the math behind Octane. We're proposing the absolutely new way of working with Octane and that, in turn, is solving a lot of problems, because that's how Octane was intended to be used. So, to work with point clouds, you need points. Uh, scatter them somehow. I, I did show this tool in one of my videos previously. It's called LMI Scatter Tool. I made it to specifically handle organic biomes of all kinds. And it is designed to both simplify our direction of your scatters in Houdini and handle complex technical setups under the hood for using SOP, slops, and in standalone all the same. I'm working on dedicated videos for each tool in our tool set. Uh, so we will not go into details of the scatter tool, as this is just a method of scattering. In Houdini, I made this for us. In Blender and uh, C4D, there are plenty other scatters. In this video, we will cover point-related concepts that are shared in our Point Cloud Baker between Houdini, Blender, and Cinema 4D. Point Cloud Baker takes any point cloud that is connected to it. Doesn't matter how it was made. It scans for common attributes such as P, Orient, P scale, or Scale and converts that into a matrix that Octane Standalone expects. Standalone does not respect the IDs, unfortunately, nor there is a way to assign IDs to geometries that you want to instance in Standalone. So we split the point clouds by IDs in DCC. If you have several species of trees, for example, you would click Split by ID and get point cloud for each species or for each type of tree scattering. All of this will become obsolete as soon as uh, Otoy changes the math behind points, at which point we will adapt our tools and re-record this video. If you decide to work with our LMI scatter tool, then it's a good idea to work with exact geometry from the library these points are intended for. That way you will have precise representation in Houdini. So let's say we scattered five types of trees. We're happy with how it looks. We export this point cloud. In the end, you have five files, one file for each tree type. 
In standalone, we can just drag and drop them in. These files are automatically set as scatters. So the only thing left to do is connect our trees with the scatters. So let's import a library of trees we made in previous videos and connect them. Simple as that. When you want to change your scatter, you do it in Houdini. Re-export and simply click Update on each scatter node in Standalone. This reference is luckily live, so when you update files with points, it gets updated in Standalone as well. You don't need to rebake your complex scenes into RBX or anything like that, just the points. Depending on how many points you're exporting, the execution time will vary, but we multi-threaded the processes to speed up slow string writing. So it's relatively quick and uh, <laughs> thousands times faster than baking or BX with geometry anyway. Forests or grass fields are not the only thing point clouds are good for. It's also a powerful optimization method. If you're working with a very large scenery where you laid out, you know, hundreds of mega scans, perhaps it's a good idea to export those mega scans as a library and their position as point cloud. For layouts, I made a tool specifically for that in Houdini called the LMI Layout Tool. In features, it resembles some stuff we used to have in Clarice, and it just speeds the layout work tenfold. As the output option, I've included the point cloud of the layout that was done. You can feed it to Point Cloud Baker and reconnect the elements in standalone to get a perfect copy of your layout. That is already working as is, but in future, when we get our binary containers and proper attribute support, this workflow could be so much more powerful. You could build infinite cities with this. Just create building blocks with IDs, then scatter them somehow cleverly in Houdini with corresponding IDs, assemble them in Octane standalone, and boom, you have infinite city. And remember what I told you about working with nested assemblies? You could scatter some details on those building blocks. They could be incredibly detailed. And instead of working with one massive piece of geometry, you're just working with one tiny blo block of super detailed something. And then you scatter it for how many times you want. How crazy would that be on GPU? You have a really powerful way of look deving your assets in standalone, stuff we discussed in previous videos about libraries. And now you have a super fast and efficient way of managing your scatters too. In what we tested for the past year and some timed tests between, between baking or BX scatters with geometry versus building libraries and exporting point clouds, the later method is several thousand times faster than some cases with animations especially. And I remind you, there is a board with the suggestions of improvements of standalone that I've made. Link can be found in the video description. Share your suggestions and ideas in the comments to this video. All interesting and constructive comments that were not previously mentioned in the board will get added for future discussions with Otto. If you're sharing my enthusiasm, then your interest is exactly what can bring the evolution to this software. <laughs>